Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, double Shabbat Shalom. Blessed Yom Kippur, or Day of Atonement, to all of Israel in the land of Israel, as well as those who are in the captive lands outside of Jerusalem. James chapter 5 and verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16, and it reads, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. We as Israelites need to confess those faults one to another and pray for each other. There are many ways that we are guilty of transgression. We have so many people that feel like that I'm holier than thou, brother, I don't do anything wrong, I have coffee with Yah every morning, so therefore the sinners are you people. I am a righteous and holier than thou person. Verse 4. Or if a soul swear pronouncing with his lips, if the soul swears, right, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good. So now you said I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, brother, I'm going to do this. Whether it be good or evil, and you don't do it, watch what he says here. The soul swears, pronouncing with his lips, whether to do evil or do good, whatever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath. So an oath is when you verbalize it out of your mouth, I'm going to do it. That's an oath, that's a vow. If he pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him when he knoweth it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. So, when you open your mouth and say you're going to do something, and that goes in many forms, marital covenants, the whole nine yards, right? Uh, friendships, maybe you joined the congregation and you decided that this is not the congregation for you, or maybe you have adopted your favorite moray, and, and, and you found out that, oh, I don't believe everything this moray teaches, so now you walk away from that. Well, you done vowed your level of commitment to that ministry and now you walked away. So, you've broken a vow. And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he have sinned in that thing. So as you have transgressed. So transgression or sin comes in many, many forms. So, uh, you know, we get this point the finger syndrome. Everybody else is wrong but me. When all of us have sinned come short of the glory of Yah. Every last Hebrew Israelite, whether you are knowledgeable that you are a Hebrew Israelite, whether you're in the covenant or not, all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yah. Every last one of us. Your favorite moray, your favorite prophetess or whoever have sinned and come short. All of us. We all stand in the need of prayer. We all stand in the need of confession. We all need to confess our sins, right? Confess your transgression your sins one to another watch what he says verse 6 and he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yah so that's what that uh, fault is the fault is a trespass if you trespassed against anyone in anything you have a fault whether you agree to it or not that's what the day of atonement is about confessing those faults and bringing watch what he says in verse 6 he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yah for his sin. See that? Because you transgressed against someone in something. A fault, right? He says he have done what? For he have sinned. A female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin right so it is his sin right so the priest we have a high priest okay Yahshua right I'm not gonna turn there but in Hebrews it tells you that he is the high priest confess don't run away from it don't say oh brother I don't have to talk to that person confess your transgression they know you got a transgression against them that's why you don't talk to them no more he said, confess your transgression. And on that note, before I go forward, I want to confess my transgression to all of those 
who I know have demonized my name. I forgive you. You've been forgiven. Okay? And you may not know that I know that you've demonized my name, but I know. Because I'm a spirit-led man. I hear the conversations in your private quarters. The Father reveals those things to his prophets. But I still love you just the same. I want to also add, anyone that I have offended, I do this annually. I've offended in any way, form or fashion, whether you were someone that I was intimately involved with 20, 30 years ago, 40 for that matter, or whether you were just an associate or friend, I want to openly confess my faults, my transgressions against you, if I wronged you in any way. It's up to you whether you forgive me or not, but I openly, publicly, on the World Wide Web, do this, okay? Before Yah, before the angels and the witnesses, I have spoken. Every sin, transgression, fault goes back to the law. Where there is no law, even Paul said it, Shaul, sin is not imputed where there is no law. So there are things that people want to deem as sin, but there's no law against it, so therefore it's not a sin. It might be something that's not favorable, but it's not a sin or transgression. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40. The father told Israel this. He said this to Israel. He said, if they shall confess, watch this now, if they shall confess their iniquity, confess their iniquity, not somebody else's iniquity, not get on and demonize somebody else and say, you need to f confess. But he says here, if you shall, if they shall confess their own iniquity, I'm going to put that own in there so you can be, so you can zoom right in on it and understand that this is talking about you. If you shall confess your own iniquity, brother, sister, all of us, we have to start with us as Michael Jackson had the song, The Man in the Mirror. We have to start with the man or the woman in the mirror first. Confess our, watch what he says, confess our, confess our iniquities, right? And the iniquities of our fathers. So, your father, my father, your mother, my mother, and generations before, we have a, a duty and responsibility to confess our iniquities and our forefathers' iniquities. How do we confess our iniquities and their iniquities? By not following the same pattern that they did. By us doing our first works, if you will, over when we were in the land of Israel. Returning to the covenant. Let's continue. Confess the iniquities of their fathers with their trespass, which they have trespassed against who? The Most High said they have trespassed against me. So they have trespassed against the Most High. So when we transgress against our brother, when we transgress against our sister, when we transgress against someone else, the Most High says we have transgressed against him. He said, which they have trans trespassed against me, that also they have walked contrary unto me. You see that? So we're supposed to confess those iniquities of our fathers and our own iniquities, that we have walked contrary to him. And he says, verse 41, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. See that? That's why we're here. Because he said, they have walked contrary. And he said, he himself has brought us. That's why when I tell people, people say, well, the Bible is a fable book. I don't believe the Bible, whatever. Okay. There's no other book that will explain to you how the so-called African-Americans got into the slave ships. But this verse right here. He said, I have did what? Brought them into their enemy's land. You say, well, brother, I'm, this is not my enemy's land. I'm in the land of freedom, home of the brave. You still don't get, have equality, right? You still have... Uh, Trayvon Martin cases where the, where 
uh, injustice is being done in his land. If this is your, if this is your land of, of friendship, the land of opportunity, you wouldn't have to be fighting for your rights. You have what you, what you deserve as a human being if this was not your enemy's land. So this is your enemy's land. He said, I have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble. Right? So we have to be humble. Our uncircumcised hearts have to be humble. And then they accept the punishment of their iniquity. So this slave trade is a punishment by the Most High Yah, who you call God or Lord. Okay? But he is the one that is punished the African Americans in America and globally because they are Israelites who broke the covenant and because we broke the covenant he has a he has sold you into slavery in captivity and you are constantly the tail in every society you go in you gotta fight to get what you deserve to get what you deserve as a human being in every civilization in every nation in every government you gotta fight for your rights that's proof that you are a descendant of these people who transgress against the law. He says, if their uncircumcised hearts be humble. You say, oh brother, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not live on the law. I'm saved by grace. You know, Jesus came and gave us grace and truth, right? You don't have to live by the law. You haven't been humble. You haven't been humble. Whenever you talk like that, you haven't been humble. You still think that I can live and just uh, do whatever I want to do and oh, he understands. You haven't been humble. Oh, brother, I'm saved by grace through faith. My faith, I'm not, I don't have faith in works. Faith and works, uh, even Jacob said it. He says, faith without works is dead. Verse 42, then will I remember my covenant. He's going to only remember the covenant. You say, well, brother, you know, prosperity. You know, I got money. I got a good job. I got, you know, all of that, right? Okay, that's not the covenant. I did a lesson about a year ago about what is the covenant of Abraham it has nothing to do with money Abraham was already rich before he even was given the covenant with the father okay it says in the scriptures that he was rich in cattle and so forth and so on he was already rich before he even was given the covenant he came from the land of Ur the Chaldees where he was a, a where, where he was in today's time a, a multi-millionaire so this day of atonement is the day to confess our faults, right? And to pray for one another that we might be healed, right? What is the healing, right? Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name, he's talking about a physical descendant of Abraham, physically, as well as those who classify themselves as being spiritual, the spiritual children of Abraham. He says, if you who are called by my name would humble yourself and pray seek my face and turn what from your wicked ways turn from your wicked ways right he said I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin and heal their land so if you're not confessing your sins your transgressions and praying there can be no healing see that's what James was saying 516 if you confess and pray for one another, then healing will come. That's what the Most High is saying. That's the only time healing will come when you confess your sins and pray, and then the healing which comes from the Father above will take place. What is that ultimate healing? The restoration of the true nation of Israel out of the captive lands, being prisoners in the various governments and doing what? Returning back to Jerusalem to do what? To be the kingdom of priests and a holy people, as he detailed in Exodus chapter 19. If you obey my voice indeed and keep my commandments, I will set you above all the other nations. I will make you a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's what he promised. One of the most holy prophets who had a relationship with the Creator, what did he do? Verse 17, this is the prayer of Doniel or Dane. He says, Now therefore, O Yah, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications. 
and cause thy face to shine upon your sanctuary that is desolate for Yah's sake, right? Oh my Yah, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by your name for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness but for your great mercies, right? So now, he's letting the Most High know, I'm not holy in the doubt. I'm not, it's not, I'm not standing and bragging and saying, oh, I'm glad I'm not like this hypocrite. I'm glad I'm not like this sinner over here. I'm glad I'm not like them. I, I'm, I'm glad that I keep the commandments. I, I keep the Shabbat. I keep the feast days. I wear the ZC, you know. I wear the culture and all that. He's not saying that in his prayer, like many pharisaical Hebrews are. Verse 19. O oh, Yah, hear, O oh, Yah, forgive, O oh, Yah, hearken and do, defer not for your own sake, O oh, my Yah, for thy city and your people are called by your name. I just quoted that out of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name. Verse 20. Okay. Verse 20, he said, And while I was speaking and praying, so he was speaking or confessing, confessing and praying, right? While he was speaking and praying and confessing my sin, he says, confessing the sins of who? Confessing his own sin, right? That's why we don't have, that's why there's so much division among Israelites in captivity because we're not confessing our sin. We think we're holier than thou. I've arrived, you know, you need to come up on my level, brother. You know, we got so much super self-righteousness, right? But he says he was confessing his sin, his transgression, his faults, his iniquities. And he says the sin of my people Israel. So we can't confess nobody else's transgressions until we confess our own. Let's deal with that first before we go out talking about what everybody else ain't doing. Right? Confess our faults and then the faults or the transgressions of Israel. He says, I was confessing my fault and the sin or transgressions of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yah, my Yah, for the holy mountain of my Yah. See that? So this is what the prophet did. He wasn't too good to acknowledge to confess his transgression. So why can't you? Why can't we? We're going to read verse 1 and 2 of Nechem Yahu, or Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. It says, Now on the twenty and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting, uh-huh, and with sackcloths, uh-huh, and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from the strangers. Hmm, sound kind of like this day of atonement to me. And stood and confessed their sin. My, 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 my. They wouldn't point the finger at somebody else. Hey, oh, y'all sinners, you hypocrites, y'all Christians, y'all Anna, y'all Muslim. No, no, we confess our own sin. And they stood up in the place and read in the book of the law of Yah, the Elohim, one fourth part of the day. So we got 24 hours a day for six hours. One fourth, six, six is twelve. Six times four is twenty-four. So for six hours, it said. They did what? They stood up in place and read from the book of the law for six hours. Man, most people, they went to assembly or congregation and had to read out of the book of the law for six hours, they'd be done walked out the whole assembly. <laughs> These people for fourth for fourth part of the day, they read out of the book of the law. And one fourth part they confessed. So for six whole hours, they confessed their iniquity, their transgressions. For six hours, when nobody said nothing, and nobody was confessing their transgression, their iniquities, for six whole hours. They prayed, they confessed, they read out of the book of the law on that day to ask the Father to do what? Have mercy upon me first, have mercy upon what? My people and the land. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5. And let's pray. Pray this prayer with me as I read it, okay? I beseech thee, O Yah, Elohim of heaven, the great and terrible Elohim, that keep the covenant 
and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servants which I pray before you now day and night for the children of Israel for your servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you both I and my father's house have sinned we have dealt corruptly against thee and have not kept thy commandments nor statutes nor judgments which you have commanded your servant Mose remember I beseech thee the word that thou command your servant Moshe saying if you transgress I will scatter you abroad among the nations but if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them though they were of you cast out into the uttermost parts of heaven yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there this is my prayer this is our prayer for this day of atonement. Father, have mercy upon us as we confess our transgressions one to another, our iniquities one to another, as we pray one for another that we may be healed. If my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. Yah said he will do it. Forgive their sins and heal their land. With all this hype going on around Syria, around Jerusalem, he said when you see the armies around Jerusalem, know that the end is near. We are close to the end, brothers and sisters. And this is a time when we need to break the bonds of division, break the bonds of transgression because we may not all be together in one place but we don't have to walk around with unforgiveness with each other we can break those bonds that we might be healed the father says that he will return and gather us from the lands where we were scattered and bring us back and exalt us above our fathers that's our prayer we pray that you have a blessed Yom Kippur day of atonement in the name of Yahshua Messiah. It says Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.